Friedrich's arrest came as no surprise to Geraldton police. They knew it was just a matter of time. Friedrich had been in the north of the state for several days, but eluded police by just hours before making his way south through Perth. Alan Russell reports from Geraldton. The trail had run cold on Monday afternoon after Friedrich was given a lift from the Geraldton airport to a local hitchhiking point on the city's outskirts. It wasn't until five hours later that budget employee Marlene Fitzgerald realised she'd been in the company of the country's number one criminal. Um, he was very clean, very, um, he wasn't nervous or anything, um, just casual. So he's very calm. Yeah, he wasn't nervous or anything. Until late today, Mrs Fitzgerald was the last person to make a positive sighting of Friedrich. There'd been many other reports, but police believed he had slipped through their net. Well, we're going around, as I said before, checking accommodation, checking car yards, checking buses, speaking to people who were pulled up, uh, speaking to all possible persons who may have seen him, with a view that he may still be here, although I feel that he's... Uh, would have left town by now, at this stage of the game. Major crime squad detectives from Perth joined the search. Much of the day was spent checking isolated fishermen's huts, but no one really thought they'd find anything. In the meantime, hitchhikers were copying a hiding from the public who made repeated claims of seeing Friedrich. One finally packed it in and caught a bus out of town. I was sort of telling all the police stations up the line who I am, what my name is. How many times have you been picked up? Oh, eight or nine since yesterday morning. Police said they continue the search even though it appeared Friedrich had escaped and they went to great lengths. An announcement at Geraldton Airport last night. Would John Friedrich or David Kingsley please report to the departure desk? As we now know, he never did. And Alan Russell is with our, uh, another live eye at Geraldton now. Alan, uh, the police are pretty lucky that they caught up with him when they did. Certainly were, David. Uh, they had a few problems emerging this morning. Early on in their search, they'd been inundated with calls from locals here saying they'd seen John Friedrich. But as the day progressed, uh, they found that those calls were coming to a trickle and, and some of the callers were saying, oh, I saw him a couple of days ago. And the police were saying, why didn't you come to us then? And it turns out that people were starting to think of John Friedrich here particularly as some sort of folk hero. The officer I interviewed in that story you just saw uh, said this morning that one description that was put to him was that he was he was like a modern day Robin Hood. A man who robbed banks, didn't really hurt anybody so uh, he wasn't a threat or a danger to anyone so you know why should we chase him, why should we put him in uh, perhaps we should just let him go or maybe tell the police a little bit later to give him a bit of a head start. I mean, as we know, he had a five-hour head start by mistake uh, when he first came to Geraldton. That was all he needed. But it seemed that uh, as the time was going to progress, the police here weren't going to get a lot of help from the locals. So I suppose if the Melbourne fraud squad at the moment is cheering with delight tonight, so would Geraldton police be. Yes, it, it seems he does have a fairly quiet nature and it was uh, an unusually quiet end to what must have been a fairly frenetic search over there. Well, the, the budget lady said to me today, as have many people during the last two weeks since I've been covering this story, John Friedrich does not strike you as the sort of man who would harm you in any way. He's a very amiable sort of character. He, he's, he's warm towards you. We know that he does have another side, but, but that is the public side he presents. And uh, frankly, I mean, he, he seems to have taken in a whole town. Thank you, Alan. Alan Russell reporting live from Western Australia. And that live cross there courtesy of Channel 10. OK, Liz Cafford will be here with sport after the break tonight. The VFL stars hit town and the banana bullet hewer runs right up to form. Paps, Gippsland's hi-fi and video specialists are proud to bring you the best from... The inventors of VHS first again with the revolutionary new Super VHS system. First with high performance video movie cameras. Audio systems with surround sound and full remote control. JVC takes you higher. JVC. The East Gippsland Field Days in Lindano is the place to find the freshest information on irrigation, packaging, harvesting and spray equipment and many new ideas in general farming. So leave Friday 28th and Saturday 29th April free to inspect the new trends at the East Gippsland Field Days in Lindano. Your local mobile distributor, Lawson's South East Petroleum, has become an institution in Gippsland and are proudly sponsoring the East Gippsland Field Days.
Don't miss it. This is Joe Wilson. Joe is confident in his latter years with the knowledge that his investment with Latrobe Country Credit is not only secure, but that with a high rate of interest he can afford to live with a bit mm, more luxury. Beat that. Joe's son Jeff and his wife recently took out a loan to buy their first home with Latrobe Country Credit. Who taught you? You did. Latrobe Here's Country Credit. Ready. For over 25 years, okay. your family's credit union. Have you done the loan yet? Secure your future now with Latrobe Country Credit. People you can trust. Celebrate Husqvarna's 300th birthday with factory bonus deals on outstanding Husqvarna sewing machines. Save $200 on Husky 22 at only $399. Save $400 on Husqvarna 3500 at only $499. And Husqvarna have just released a range of new and exciting overlockers priced from only $599. Now you can own the sewing machine you've always wanted. Europe's leading brand, Husqvarna. Available from these stores in Sale, Morwell, Bansdale and Yarram. Good evening. The Trove Valley school children had a chance to meet their footy heroes today in person. Players from most of the VFL clubs took part in super clinics at Moe and Terelgan. Ian Needham went along for a few tips. The footy clinics are a regular and much anticipated event. For most of these kids, it's as close as they'll get to their footy heroes. From the VFL point of view, it's a chance to spread the football gospel. It's good to show that the VFL, it's uh, just not a big body that sticks in at Melbourne or whatever and, you know, don't care about the uh, country areas or the, the kids in general. Um, so it's good that we can get out and we enjoy having contact with the kids and hearing what they've got to say about football as well. Gary Pert says it's also important for the players to realise just how much influence they have on youngsters in all sorts of areas. One of those areas is smoking. Pert's team, Fitzroy, is sponsored by the Quit Campaign, and so are the clinics. That's one of the other messages that we get across to the kids is uh, to try and get to the kids before they start smoking. And the players probably, in a lot of cases, don't realise how much the kids look up to them. And, uh, of course, if they're not behaving the right way, the kids pick up on that and they behave the same way. So the, the players have got a big responsibility. And, uh, you know, that's one of the other reasons why we're up here, to, you know, teach the kids the right things. And teach the kids the right thing they do, especially when it comes to the skills of the game. It's a shame VFL footy clinics weren't around when some of we older people were budding junior stars. For some reason, Essendon under-19 coach Ray Jordan didn't What's think this? much of my skills. <laughs> Unbelievable. Last year's Melbourne Cup champ Hewer scored a close win in the $7,000 Warrigal Cup for Greyhounds last night. Hewer boxed superbly from the white and although headed prior to the turn, came again to score by a length. Racing, Hewer began brilliantly. He's landed three parts in front of Red Yoy and Gamble. Going up fast, the outside, Red faces to third. Staying off the track is Crafty Deeds, moving up along its inside, Bar Barriott. In a bit of trouble, Tiger Treese went back through the field with Big Ted. Hewer is joined and headed by Roy Yoy and Gamble, which got right up on the inside on the turn. They're clear of Gay Raja, Crafty Deeds and Red faces. Hewer coming again. Gay Raja screaming home. Hewer will get the cup. Hewer by three parts to Roy, Red Yoy and Gamble, which almost caused the boil over. In the first Getting leg of the double, the Elf was having its last outing before being retired to start. Got through. Little length and a half to Metzman on the turn. Three links to Polish Oak getting right off the track. Gun Fury and then came Dr. Fox. Metzman is coming after Elf again. Elf and Metzman. Elf on the outside. He'll just get there. The favourite Elf by a head tops to Metzman. In the second leg, Ben Hill was the odds-on favourite. Ben Hill's back near last off the track. Elusive action and Val Curl is last on the turn. Beasting is just in front. Benito's boy comes to it quickly. The airbrander right down the outside. Getting up along the inside. Ghostly light. Little Beasting in front close to home beasting a half length on the line to bonito's boy and the daily double for one elf and one beasting paid five dollars 45. and that's sport rain on the way tomorrow selene's back with the damp details after the break valleyway homes offer quality craftsmanship top homes of your choice in just five or six weeks. Five or six weeks for a newly built high quality home from Valleyway. Impossible. No it isn't. We'll show you perfect attention to detail, outstanding interior finish, great exteriors with style to suit your taste and pocket. All complete and ready for delivery to your site in five or six weeks. See them all and choose your favourite style from the Rosedale display on the Princess Highway Rosedale. Give some mobile phones. Is the manager in, please? No, he's not. But you'll reach him on his car phone. Tony Nielsen. Hello, Tony. It's Dave. Look, I'm thinking about a car phone. Dave, I'm just down the road. I'll see you in five. 
This is the range of NEC phones, the in-car, the transportable and the handheld. What about installation? 24 hours, your place or ours. Remember Dave, when you're out of touch, you're out of business. Hello and what a beautiful autumn day we had, although it is starting to cloud over and looks like we could be in for some rain. A moderate fresh north to northeast wind blew across most areas but didn't seem to affect the temperatures throughout Gippsland. The Riviera topped the region with 32 degrees. It was 31 in Orbost, the Valley and East Sale, Omeo scored 24 and Nuji 27. 29 in Point Hicks and down in the south it was a warm 31 in Foster, 30 in Monthaggy and a sunny 24 at the Prom. Well, why was it so warm? A very warm and moist air mass ahead of a cold front has moved across the state. Now, the low pressure system is moving in southeast and ahead of a cold front and rain for all districts. Cool, cooler west to southwest wind gusts are also moving in. For Gippsland, there's rain areas with local thunderstorms, mild and humid with a north to northwest wind tending west to southwest later tomorrow, fresh to strong about the coast. For the Latrobe Valley, rain is becoming widespread tonight, local thunderstorms, mild, humid and cloudy with a moderate northeasterly wind tending cooler westerly later tomorrow. The outlook for Friday, showers and clearing, Saturday fog and cool to mild, Sunday mainly fine. For tomorrow, the Latrobe Valley is 24, Sale will have 24 and Orbos 27. In brief, rain's developing and if you're off to Melbourne tomorrow, rain periods and a yucky 20. Oh, well, thanks very much. OK, Celine. OK, now more on the Friedrich saga and the family home at Seaton uh, near Hayfield is deserted. We spoke with Shirley Frederick's mother this morning, but it appears since hearing of John Frederick's capture, the family has gone into hiding. The Friedrich home in Seaton was again deserted this afternoon with the family believed to have gone into hiding after learning about John Friedrich's capture. Shirley Friedrich and the family's three children returned to the home at the weekend but have avoided media attention. Southern Cross Network News spoke to Mrs Friedrich's mother this morning but attempts this afternoon proved fruitless. Petrina Quinn is on the scene. Mrs Friedrich and the three children, Catherine, Timothy and Hayden, returned home to Seaton on the weekend after staying with her parents in Sydney. The three children returned to the local grammar school today. But by this afternoon, Mrs Friedrich and the children and her parents left the family home, probably to stay with friends or to drive to Melbourne. It's believed Mrs Friedrich had no idea of her husband's dealings. The family dog has been left behind to guard the house. We understand Perth Police contacted Mrs Friedrich just after 3 o'clock this afternoon with news of her husband's capture. Petrina Quinn for Southern Cross Network News. OK, on that rather dramatic note, we bid you goodbye tonight, but stay with us now as we cross to 9 for the national news until tomorrow night at 6. This is Shane Dennett. Good night. This is National Nine News with Brian Mailer. Exclusive pictures of the dramatic capture of NSC Chief John Frederick south of Perth this afternoon. Good evening and Frederick was grabbed as he left a telephone box in a caravan park on the outskirts of the city. Perth police were acting on a tip-off from a taxi driver. Frederick, who's been hunted nationwide since disappearing 15 days ago, left the NSC with debts of up to $255 million. Michael Venus with the story. Australia's most infamous face was still hiding behind others as he arrived under police escort at Perth CIB headquarters. Earlier this afternoon, he'd been dropped off by taxi at this shop at Baldivis, an outer suburb 40 kilometres south of Perth. He'd left Geraldton on Monday morning and travelled by bus down the coastal highway only hours before his abandoned car had been found. At Baldivis, he booked into a local caravan park, planning to stay for five nights. At 7.30 on Monday and Tuesday nights, he bought groceries from a nearby roadhouse. But an alert taxi driver who dropped him at the store was one of several who recognised the fraud fugitive, even though he'd shaved off his beard and had put on considerable weight. He was really nervous, really agitated. And at one stage he ran from that, that corner down to the, the road there, so he, he'd seen somebody new with a car. 
Right. And he ran back to the corner, then he hid behind the tree. Concerned that he was about to flee, Mrs Ward rang police for the second time in half an hour and they were there in five minutes. Here, and he was looking the other way when the, car, the police car drove up and they just drove him straight behind him, um, put their arm across his side and frisked him and put him in the car. But even as they were returning to Perth, police continued to shield Frederick from the public eye. As he was being transferred from a regional police car to a major crime squad vehicle, detectives were determined to try and keep his identity a secret. Boys, excuse me, boys. Piss off. Get a job done here. The policeman who made the arrest, Inspector Vince Katich, says Frederick had explained his actions. He felt uh, obviously uh, pressure bearing on him, and he's uh, made his move. I guess uh, he's making his move back to front the pressure. Within the hour, six Victorian fraud squad detectives will be on their way to Perth to seek Frederick's extradition. He's expected to appear in court tomorrow morning. Apart from authorities who'd hunted him across four states for more than two weeks, this New Zealand hitchhiker is as relieved as anyone about Frederick's arrest, bearing a remarkable resemblance to the NSC boss. He's been picked up by police nine times in 24 hours, and the joke was starting to...